go and Maria, if I start. I'm ready to go, yeah. Okay, all right. Well, hello everyone and welcome to this week's Wednesday workshop guaranteed to leave you hungry by the time we're done. Even if you've already eaten dinner, I haven't. So I figured that this would be my, you know, get my salivation going so I can eat when I'm done. Um, of course, our weekly workshops are part of our virtual home and lifestyle showcase, uh, which you can check out at newmarkethomeshow.ca. It's running through still until May the 16th. And there's really some great businesses featured. There's deals of the day and even a contest to win a shopping spree at Upper Canada Mall. So I encourage you to check it out. As I just mentioned, we will be recording tonight's session for our YouTube channel. And if you have any questions, you can pop them in the chat. And of course, we will get to them as soon as we can. And with that, I would like to introduce our guest of honor tonight and throw it over to and Marie Million of A Million Mouthfuls Catering, who tonight is going to show us all how to make a, a top-notch breakfast for Mother's Day. But really, I suppose it could be for anybody, right? I mean, it's Mother's Day this weekend. That's why we're doing this. We thought it would be a great idea. But uh, anybody could enjoy what you're going to be serving up tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Hi there, everybody. Uh, <laughs> thanks uh, for having me and introducing me. Um, I hopefully, um, I know many of you, but there's some newcomers. I wanted to say thanks first to the chamber for um, asking me to do the workshop. Um, it's kind of a win-win for both of us, the chamber members and some of the staff, because I know that people have been wanting to get this recipe for a while. So we talked about a few recipes and it was you like bet. French toast. And I was like, it's been served at some chamber breakfast and it's been kind of um, a bit of a, a thing that people like. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about stuff with the French toast as we get going. Um, so it's car it, what it is, is it's a caramelized French toast. And the thing that I like about it the most is this can be done the night before and put in the fridge, pull it out in the morning, turn on your oven, throw it in your oven. And, you know, 40 minutes later, you have this delicious French toast. Of course, you can have your little sides and accompaniment done as well. But it's kind of nice that you're not scrambling in the morning if you're trying to do something earlier in, in the day. Um, it doesn't have to sit overnight. So if you um, are in a hurry or you just decide, okay, one morning we're going to do it, you just have to let it soak for a little bit because it's important for the bread to um, absorb the egg mixture. So we'll do the French toast first and then we're going to do a smoothie and then a little bit of a presentation, um, if that's okay, and talk a little bit about some beverages and how you can make it extra special for the person that you're making it for. Fantastic. So to start with, um, sorry, yeah, so to start with, we use um, a challah bread or an egg bread. Um, I don't know if everybody can see it. So um, this one has sesame seeds on it. Um, it's just the best bread to do this with, um, and you can order it from, you know, any bakery, even something like a superstore. You just have to pre-order it typically because they tend to slice all the bread first thing in the morning. So you want to order it unsliced because the thickness of it, I think, is part of the deliciousness of it. Um, so basically, I, you know, I usually cut a little bit off the end because it doesn't soak up as much. And you want a nice thick slice. So I would say probably close to about an inch or so. Um, and with one of these loaves, you can get, you know, serve four out of it. Um, most people I find only can have, like only can eat a one piece because it's, it's quite rich as you see the recipe progress. Um, you'll notice that it's got some heavy <laughs> cream and stuff in it. So there's the bread slice. And then what we're going to do next is we're going to prepare the pan. So again, because we're baking it, we're going to use, uh, you can use metal, I tend to use glass, whichever you like. You start off by um, using brown sugar. And again, I can post recipes later. So the recipe brown sugar goes in um, and you just spread it evenly across the bottom of the pan. It's quite a bit. Um, it's almost a cup. You can back it off if you want, but really it's what makes it so tasty. Uh, melted butter, same thing. Um, it's a fair bit, three quarters of a cup for this size of a dish and the recipe that we're making for four people. Um, so you just kind of want to 
sprinkle it or make sure that it's kind of, you don't have to heat it. You just have to melt, put the melted butter over the actual brown sugar, okay? Any questions so far? Are we good? Good? All okay. good so far. Um, yeah, so all good. Great. Okay. I said all you good so I far. I forgot to color it right through you, so it's like, yeah, that. sorry. Go ahead, everybody. So then the mixture for the, uh, to dip the bread into the egg mixture is four eggs. Um, you whisk them up. A um, little pinch of salt. I really like using Himalayan pink salt in everything. It just gives such a good flavor. It's much healthier for you. So try that. Um, a teaspoon of cinnamon. If you don't like cinnamon, you don't have to use it. Some people, I've used vanilla for people in the past, orange. Um, at Christmas time when we've done things, we do it with eggnog to give it another flavor. So it's really up to you, but typically cinnamon would be the thing that you would do. Mm -hmm. um, whipping cream. So this is where the um, you know richness comes into it. So it's whipping cream. But again, if you want to back it out a little bit or cut it down and use half whipping cream, half milk, it's not going to ruin the recipe. Um, if you want to do coffee cream, that type of thing, you're welcome to as well, but the whipping cream really makes it quite delicious. So we're looking at about um, a, a generous cup of whipping cream, the recipe so calls for. What you're saying, Anne-Marie, this is a um, calorie conscious breakfast is what yep. you're saying, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's calorie conscious all right. Okay, I'm just gonna throw this in here. So then the next thing we've got our pan prepared and we have the bread sliced. So the next piece would be to dip the bread. Um, so again, just trying to get enough on each side, but at the end of this, we're gonna pour the remainder of the egg mixture over all of the bread. So it'll give it some more to soak in and just placing it down on the um, brown sugar butter mixture, which is the caramelized piece. So we'll do this. I'm not gonna make you all wait to see it baked either. So I have a, you know, that power television. I baked one earlier today. So we'll be presenting that in a bit so you can see the finished product. I can see by the thickness when you're putting them in how yes, one piece would be sufficient for one person. It yeah. would be, yeah. So, um, and then, you know, typically you'll see when we do the presentation, we like to do a bit of a, a bit of a diagonal just to make it look pretty. So just smush it all in, pour the rest of the mixture on top of the bread and we'll soak, soak in no problem. I'm just gonna stick this over here, sorry about that. And you would cover this with um, parchment paper and then tin foil. And I, I say parchment paper because I don't know if anybody's ever experienced this, but sometimes when you put tin foil on food, and there's any type of steam or liquid, it'll start pulling away some of the foil from the piece and flake into your food. So parchment's always mm. a really great way to not have the foil stick or have little bits come away and just protect the product that you have in there. So and this is for overnight just, after you've done it and you're putting it in so your yeah, fridge so, for so the night. So parchment paper or tin foil, stick it in the fridge overnight. You pull it out in the morning, still keep the tin foil and the parchment on, put it in a 350 degree oven, 40 minutes. Um, and usually I check it sometimes after about 30 and if it looks like it's doing really well, I'll flip the bread, you'll see, so that you can get a little caramelization on each side, but really one side's really good and, and caramelized um, and just put it back in the oven and let it finish for another eight minutes. So again, that would be part of the recipe. So that's your bread mixture. I'm just gonna stick that over here. Okay, um, so again, if you wanted to make it the day of, just maybe take a few extra, you know, 30 seconds or so, like just let that bread soak a little bit more in the mixture as opposed to seeing what I did. Because you can do it quite quickly like I did if it's going right. overnight. But if you're wanting to make it pretty quickly, then let it soak in on both sides, some of that uh, good egg mixture, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, just find my notes here. Sorry, give me a second. Uh, any questions about that part from anybody over there? 
Um, I think, I'm sorry, I should check the chat. Um, yep, no, we're all good. Okay. One of the other things that I wanted to say too is, um, the nice thing about this is if you're making it ahead and all the other pieces, you can have stuff in the fridge and it's a really great quick execution. Um, I don't know if anybody's ever done this before, but you, you can add things like bacon or sausage to the side and those can be done in the oven too on a sheet pan. And that way it's kind of like, you know, she can dinners are all popular now because it's one pan and that's where you have the extra pan. Right. But you can cook bacon in the oven, you can cook sausage in the oven and the amount of time that the recipe takes for the French toast, um, it would cook, you just flip them and then you'd have, again, not have pans all over your stove that you're dealing with. So I think that's and nice. so I'm a, handy. I'm a, I'm a proponent of the bacon in the oven because it keeps your stovetop clean and it bakes yeah. it evenly. I love it. It's awesome. Yeah, you just flip it halfway through. I, I know like at the golf course, when I used to go to the golf course, we would do bacon for five, 600 people and we'd just do sheet pans of it. And people would say, how do you do the bacon? It, I think people would really enjoy it. It comes out yeah. really well. So, okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is um, the peach. Now, I, the recipe calls for two grilled peaches, but I've done one and I'll show you a finished product, but I just wanted to kind of talk about peaches in general tonight. Um, so with the peach, um, typically you, with fruit, it's, you're never, you never really, really know if you um, are going to be able to get it at the perfect ripeness, right? Like you try your best, but sometimes, so really a peach is easy to work with if it's ripe and ready to go. So the easiest way to uh, half a peach is just to take a knife and run it along the seam. I've already done this one, but just give you an example. Typically you have to, if it's a little bit firm, you have to give it a good tug and then it would open up and hopefully your pit would come out relatively easy. And then you're ready to start the process for grilling. Peaches on their own are sweet enough. They don't need, I mean, you can caramelize peaches for other recipes. I personally would recommend it for this because there's a lot of sugar and that sweetness already in the actual mm -hmm. French toast. But I like to, when I'm doing my peaches, I do like to add a little splash of really good quality balsamic vinegar because I just find it really just gives it a really nice flavor and color when you're grilling. Mm. Really great quality olive oil, just a little splash. So we're not dealing with, um, you know, sticking on your grill. Okay, so just a little bit. Um, and... Um, if you want a little bit of sweetness, depending on what the peaches are like, maybe a little off season, some honey. Um, oh. Big believer in, you know, local supporting um, your beekeepers um, and your farmers and stuff. So buy some honey and you can use it in all sorts of stuff. So you would just kind of mix it around um, and then you would uh, put it on the grill. Now, again, you know, the weather hasn't been fantastic. So if you don't, if you're not the type of person who barbecues outside in the crappy weather, uh, you can definitely use like, you know, one of these little indoor grills. Um, you can use a grill pan on your stove top. Um, and if you don't have either of those, you could just use like, you need a good, like a nice heavy pan, like cast iron. Everybody should have a cast iron frying pan, as far as I'm concerned, mm -hmm. to get color on things. So, you know, it just to sear it, right? But it's nice to get some color on the peaches and not just the color but the flavor of the grill so you can see I did some earlier today and they have some nice color on them mm -hmm. you can see there um so that makes it uh yeah like it just gives it and those flavors of the uh, bit of honey and the balsamic have gone infused right into them okay two so questions at this two questions while we're on the peaches so someone has asked um, yeah. if, if you're not a peach fan, what would you recommend as a substitution yeah. for peach? Right. So you could, um, if you like the idea of still grilling something, um, I find grilled pineapple is really delicious. Mm, so you yum. can grill it in the wedges and then cut it up. So I would use the exact same method. Maybe not add the honey just because pineapple is sweeter. Uh, but I'll, you know, you cut it and do a nice wedge and grill the whole thing. It's Grilled pineapple is so amazing on so many things. Mm -hmm. um, it, this recipe is very good too with like bananas, not grilled because they don't too well on the grill, but if you just wanted to saute them up in a pan with a little bit of butter, um, delicious mm -hmm. uh, with it. Um, 
you know, you want stone fruits and harder, firmer fruits for grilling. So, you know, you could do nectarines, you could do plums, pineapple, um, peaches. I wouldn't do things other than that because you're going to just have, it's not going to do well. It's just not going to hold right. up. Um, right. And it might even bitter the taste a little bit. Okay. And then so, um, you, you mentioned a good, bals a good quality balsamic. Do you have any recommendations somebody has asked? No, I just, you know what? I just tend to go to like, um, I try to just, there's so many out there, but I just try to kind of buy just something that's aged really well, not, a, you know, just a pedestrian brand. I often go to like, you know, little Italian markets, that kind of stuff um, mm -hmm. and things and stuff like that. My olive oil, my daughter buys me the most expensive stuff from downtown Toronto as gifts, so it's awesome. So, you know, <laughs> you can just buy stuff. I don't have a better brand. I kind of play around, just buy something that's really aged well. Um, and you'll be fine. And same with the olive oil, like really good quality. It pays like you don't want to be cooking with that type of olive oil, but you want to use it in things that you're going to taste the flavor. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's those things done. So then what we're going to do is we will do the um, ricotta for the, for the peaches. Um, so ricotta is kind of just a nice compliment because it's another layer of flavor. But if you want it to not do it, you don't have to. If you want it to do um, whipped cream, you know, you could do whipped cream as well. Again, it's all about the people that you're preparing it for. Mm -hmm. My philosophy in food and cooking is, is that you really want to make sure that the people that are consuming it love it. So when I'm, you know, working with clients all the time, I'm like, what are your favorites? You know, what are the things that you love? What are the things that you don't love? You know, are you will you explore new things, those types of things. So you kind of know, if, you know, if you were making it Jennifer for somebody in your family, you would know their likes and dislikes. So I right. don't want more yeah. dairy, just kind of that type of thing. Um, sure. What I want to say about ricotta is, again, you can buy good quality ricotta and you can just buy something that's generic. Um, when you buy cheeses like ricotta um, and other types of things that are perhaps like even like shredded cheeses, you have to be careful that they don't fill them with other things that, and it's not like, I'm not saying that hazardous, but it just doesn't make a good quality product when you're using it. Um, mm -hmm. And it'll have a lot of liquid in it. So then it just makes whatever you're making really super right. I mean, you can drain ricotta, but start with a really great um, product. And uh, again, go to a great Italian little market, um, you know, that type of place or good cheese purveyor, Nature's as an example. Um, I buy a great brand actually at Costco. I buy, I buy them for my suppliers. I have the same one at mm -hmm. Costco. It's in a big container. I make everything with it. Yoki, lasagna, you name it. It's awesome. The ricotta. So it's a good way to start. So with the ricotta, I've just got some in a dish. Um, I love, love, love lemon zest with ricotta. I think that they just are meant to be together. Mm. Um, they just really complement, and it will help a little bit with having something, a fresh flavor, not just a sweet flavor. And then we add in a little bit of icing sugar just to give it a little bit of sweetness so it's not straight up dairy, you know, not the ricotta cheese. So just a little bit of icing sugar, help bind it a little bit too, but it's more to give it a little bit of sweetness. Um, I've had people when we've made other things and we make cannolis and stuff, we didn't put like really nice fresh vanilla in there. So you can mm -hmm. do that. But again, the French toast is sweet. So you don't want to over sweeten anything too much. So that's how that would look. Any questions about the ricotta? No questions on the ricotta. Okay, so with the ricotta, when we go to do the peaches, we're going to do that now so it's ready to go for the presentation. So I put it in a piping bag, but not everybody wants to do a piping bag. Um, so, you know, again, the little hole that's uh, from the pit, you can make it a little bit bigger um, before you grill it with a melon baller if you want to have a lot of ricotta in there. And then you would just give it a little pipe and it looks pretty ready to go to go on the, the pan or the French toast dish. So I so know people like are that. gonna be 
well, maybe not everybody, but me thinking first thing is what if I don't have a piping bag? What's my substitution? Yeah, so I was just going to tell you that. Thanks for asking. <laughs> so if not, you can just do something very simple and fill it with a spoon. If you want to get a little bit fancier, anybody can do this. There's a word called quenelling that is a culinary uh, method. And basically you take a spoon. I usually use two different slightly sized spoons because I just find it works well for me. And basically you put it on the spoon, you take the one spoon, you run it like this, then you run it back, you run it back and you kind of get this nice little, I don't know if you can see it, it's a nice little kind of ovally. Mm -hmm. So you can do that. So we'll do two pieces here and have it on it. Um, it might be too much, or you can just simply just take the spoon and fill the little hole and it looks fine. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. think it gives a little bit of a, depending what you use for a tip, but it doesn't need to be that way. So there's a few different options. Spoon, fancy spoon, or piping with a little bit of a frilly, a frilly tip. Okay, so we have that. So then the next thing we would do is, um, I got the ricotta, sorry, I just want to catch my notes here, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so I think what we'll do is we'll go into maybe the finished product to show mm -hmm. everybody what it looks like. And I've got a bit of a staging thing here, but we'll start with this little pan. It doesn't have to be in a little pan, it could be on a plate, it could be whatever. But my thing again is food is always so cool when it's like the way it's presented. Right. Um, it makes it, food's, food's got to be delicious, but it looks, it has to look great when you look at it. Like you have to love it with your eyes. So I'm a big believer in that. I'm just going to grab this one. Of them. Okay. You almost have to want to not eat it because you don't want to ruin how awesome it looks, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, I did a smaller version today, so don't be confused. Um, I didn't do a big one because we can only eat so much, eat so much French toast in this house, although they love it. So basically, um, when it's baked, you can see this gorgeous caramelized. I don't know if I'm holding it up okay. Yeah. You see yeah. it? Mm -hmm. So this caramelization. That was me flipping it, like I said to you. So then you have um, the whole pieces. I had a couple of half pieces because this was a smaller pan. So got that piece there. And then just uh, slice it. I do it on a diagonal, right? You've got this lovely caramelization. Way you go, try to present it. So it looks pretty as we were talking about. And then I would put the peaches in front of it. Mm. Um, if you want, you can do um, a little bit of fresh mint, um, an herb, that type of thing. I'm a big believer in um, garnishes and food being things that are meant to be and edible and organic. So as an example, you could put a, you could put a pansy on here and even you could eat it if you wanted to, but if you right. didn't eat it, it would contaminate your food, but it makes it look beautiful. So as opposed to, you know, plastic little things and stuff like that, you know, right. discover flowers, discover herbs as, you know, your access to just mm -hmm. finish off your. I love that idea. That's a great idea. Yeah. And different vessels, boards, you know, that type of thing, pans, like I did there, they just all tend to. Um, just accent everything and make it look awesome. Sorry, I'm just going to scoot here for a sec. Okay. So I don't know if there's any, have I lost anybody along the way? Are we good? No, we've got a full house. Yeah, everybody's uh, probably mouth watering right now. We all, will, well, actually, everybody's commenting that because you mentioned you're going to have too much French toast, they'll take your leftovers. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Tell me the address and we'll deliver it. You know, right. it's, it's actually, so I made, when I did the sample a week or two ago to do some pictures for, for the chamber, I just left it on the counter and oh my gosh, you're walking past and just cutting a little corner, eating it, cutting a little corner, eating it. It was like, stop, like yeah. you can just eat it as right. it is. You don't really need a lot of other things with it. Um, so the next thing we're going to just talk about is um, the smoothie. We talked about having, adding a smoothie if you want. And I kind of kept the smoothie light um, because you are having French toast and potentially you're adding bacon or sausage and other fruits and that. Um, I tend to really enjoy a tropical fruit smoothie. Um, 
obviously frozen fruit is best. And I freeze a lot of my own fruit as I can, but I buy these bags of this size of bag. It does one smoothie. Um, it's, this is a tropical. It has pineapple and guavas and passion fruit and all this stuff. So it's really mm. quite delicious. Um, and it's easy. You just pull them out of the freezer. Um, you can do a big blender. This is, a, I'm just doing a single one. So I use this all the time for smoothies. And um, adding orange juice um, to it, you can definitely add any type of juice you want, but you'll get a lot of juice from the actual smoothie itself. I really like adding yogurt, like a mm -hmm. good, plain, brief yogurt, not too much sugar. That'll give you some body if you're looking for something a bit more substantial. So maybe it's not, you know, the mm -hmm. French toast that time with the, with the smoothie. So that's a good, good thing to do. And another thing that I often add into my smoothies, again, if you're looking for something more nourishing, are spinach, kale. My five-year-old grandson calls these magic leaves, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> when he says magic leaves, but he thinks that's what my son, my son-in-law calls them, so he can't eat them. Um, so when he's here, he'd be like, Gigi, can you put magic leaves in my smoothie? So it's good <laughs> to get ingredients in your diet as well. That's great. Um, so you just simply put the fruit in, add the juice. Um, if you want the magic leaves or spinach leaves or kale leaves, add them. I mean, people add protein if you want to do yogurt, blend away. Um, and I did one earlier. So you get something like this. Um, I really believe fun glassware, nice glassware is the way to go to. Um, reusable straws, we're all about yes. um, really being environmentally um, conscious and even more so with pivoting our business to do more of these charcuterie boxes and boards because of COVID and take away um, all of the things that we're using are either reusable or compostable or whatever. So we really were selective about that because we don't want to keep, we don't want to keep things like that form, unfortunately, and fill up the landfill, right? Right. So that's that. Okay. And wow, I'm going. I thought it was going slow. I'm buying. Yeah, no, you're. You're great. We've got time. two minutes left, but I, wow. Are you, are you, this is the yeah. Best. Okay. I know. So I'm going to uh, move this over. Okay. So I want to show you the final presentation that I did. So. You know, nothing better than whether it's, you know, it's all about girl love, right? Women love girl love. This is Mother's Day. Let's treat the women in our lives um, with a special day. So again, going back to presentation, I'm going to put this up here. Hopefully people can see it. Oh, right? wow. Okay. So think about breakfast in bed, right? It doesn't have to be breakfast in bed, but if you're taking it out to the patio or sitting at the dining room table, you've got this great little tray. Um, as my grandson asked me to put this on here, you know, so it could be the grandchild's homemade flower. It could be a fresh little flower. It could be a little succulent. So dress it up and think about that kind of stuff. Miniature bottle of Prosecco, champagne flute, garnish it with a berry or something like that. Have the orange juice and a beautiful carafe. Um, this is a little bit kind of modern rustic-y because of the wood board and stuff like that. But it's all about who you're doing it for. If your mm -hmm. person that you're making this for is all about bling, call out the silver. You know, if it's somebody who loves their vintage dishes and doesn't get to use them enough, pull out the vintage dishes and do the china teacups and that kind of stuff. If you're not a champagne mimosa person, it could be a beer. It could be a good wine. It could be a cocktail. So just think about the person, again, you're giving to. It could be a great cup of coffee. So whatever you're doing, buy quality and do it, right? So on the board here, we have um, the French toast. We did a nice little fresh fruit salad, some figs as a garnish. Now this leaf isn't edible, but it's not touching the food, so we're fine. Maple syrup. Yeah. Buy the, <laughs> we have maple, we're lucky to have maple syrup here, so buy the real stuff. It makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. um, and just, you know, a little cutlery, nice napkin, and you've got your breakfast in bed, breakfast on the patio, whatever you may want to call it. I absolutely love it. And the, the fact that you just hit on that point at the end about break out the good china, the teacups, our workshop Wednesday last week was downsizing Diva and said mm -hmm. that if you, if you want to hold on to your china and your good linens, use them. 
right? So mm -hmm. put them out first. Yeah. This would be a perfect time to to use something like that. Yeah. So so that I say that it, it make it about the style that that person is or the type of party you're having or whatever. Um, it's a good. It's a really good reason to break that stuff. Sure. It it is. Yeah. Well, it looks wonderful. And I wasn't lying when I said I haven't eaten dinner yet. So I'm absolutely starving. Um, for those on this uh session that don't know, this entire yeah. kit is available. So you can order it, everything down to the cast iron pan, all the ingredients, right, Anne Marie, and and yeah. the follow along recipe. And right. tomorrow's yeah. the deadline, and it's $35. Yeah. For everything. And it's uh, just email. I had it's part of the Cambridge social media postings you guys had. It, I did too. It, it's yeah. best to email me um, as opposed to the other social media platforms. I can keep it straight. Right. Um, and you can, I can deliver um, or you can pick it up Saturday or Sunday. I'm finding most people that are ordering them want them Saturday so they can prepare it. Um, so I'm doing deliveries in Newmark and Aurora, you know, certain amounts of East Columbia. So happy to deliver for no charge. I think, oh, well, I'm yeah. going to order one. I already said, I think it's fabulous. So I thank you so much. That's great. Everything you make is, is, is wonderful for anybody who hasn't tried any of Anne Marie's. I, I did her charcuterie box for two uh, last month and it was enough for four and it was stunning. So um, everything you do is great. Yeah. And so we can't do in-person events right now and, and gatherings with our large groups, but we still want to have times to do things. So that's why we're kind of focusing a bit more on that, but we are here to do whatever people want. We are customizing and catering to, uh, you know, what that person wants to do. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. Really loved okay, thank it. You. We're, we're thank you to everybody. Time. Thanks everybody yeah, we're, for joining. Very Happy Mother's time. Day for all the women in the world. Yay. And all the men that might be on there, take care of mamas. And um, tomorrow is the deadline if you did want to order the kit. So thank you again. Yeah. Really appreciate this. And, and again, to everybody who's on, we've got two more workshop Wednesdays until the virtual home show wraps up on the 16th. So we encourage you to go to the newmarkethomeshow.ca check out all of the events we've got coming up. There's deals and sales and you can win a $500 shopping spree to Upper Canada Mall. I mean, who doesn't want Ooh. that, right? So, yeah. Um, yeah. So thank you to everybody. Really appreciate it. And especially you. Thanks, Anne Marie. Okay, thanks to the chamber. Thanks so much. Have a good night, everybody. Take care. Bye. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.